Magadan Umaga. I know a couple of words. I'm not, I'm not very good, but still. Um, my name is Marty. You already just met my wife and kid. Uh, just to give you guys a little short background, we, uh, we were part of Mana Ministry uh, about 12, 13 years ago. We were here for about two years. And then after that, we went into mainland China. Uh, and in the beginning of 2023, uh, we moved to, uh, a little more than a year ago. We moved to the Philippines. Uh, and we were in Manila for about a year. Uh, after that, I, I really got tired of the, tr we got tired of the traffic. Um, so we, we moved up to Baguio about uh, two months ago uh, to take over a, a church and also the partnership program you just heard about. So before I get started, um, you know, I, I want to tell you guys about the program that we are heading up. Because if you have, ch and many of you, I, Joy and I have the utmost uh, just respect for all of you OFW who work overseas and provide for your family. And we know that many of you have children back home, and this is a wonderful program uh, for everybody, you know. Uh, so what we have at Alpha Cruises is a university in Australia, fully accredited. Uh, normally, if you would go there to get your, uh, get your degree, it would take about 16,000 US a year. Uh, but our pro uh, the program at Baguio allowed you to earn the exact same degree, same accreditation in the Philippines, in Baguio, and our tuition every year is only uh, 5,000 US, okay? And that's per year, right? And of course, you have your housing and dormitory, but everything at the end of the day, you are talking about less than 8,000 uh, US dollars a year for your children to get uh, an Australian education, okay? So if you have any relative, friends who are interested in getting, uh, you know, going to college, to have them think about uh, uh, Baguio, okay? Uh, in this program that we have, right? Uh, we have, we have, some graduate who just recently graduated in March, um, one of them has actually just got a job. He's going to move from Baguio to, to Manila in about two months. He's going to be working at Google right there in Passe, and he's going to make approximately 100,000 pesos every month. Okay. I mean, that's, that's a good salary for a young graduate, so, so praise the Lord, right? So, yep, uh, praise, praise God. Now, with that said, I actually know a couple more words in, uh, in Tagalog. But they are most, you're probably very familiar with that. You know, like Pastor Mokwan said, I know Pensit, but I also know Lachon, Adobo, Asado, okay? Uh, those are all important stuff, okay? Uh, but I, I, if you go around in Hong Kong asking people where the CR is, they have no idea what a CR is. So, uh, with that said, our topic today uh, is talking about beyond the bromance, okay? So, we are talking about friendship. And when I was asked to talk about that, or the first word that actually came to my mind is actually a Filipino word. Do you know what that is? What am I thinking about? Pakikisama. Right? Yeah, if I'm correct, you can correct me. I think the meaning is to walk with somebody, right? To have that kind of relationship, which is the key. And when we, were, when we first got to the Philippines, you go, that is your goal in ministry, to have Pakikisama with people, to have that type of relationship that you can walk alongside with somebody, okay? So that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, now, I'm sure we all have friends. Some have more, some have less, and then there is different type of friends. But with that said, the type of friendship we're going to talk about today is so rare that I would argue with somebody that it's probably easier for you to find a diamond than to find the type of relationship, type of friendship we're about to talk about. Okay, uh, the next slide I think you will see is a pyramid. Okay, it's, in, it's called a friendship pyramid. You can Google that. There's a lot of different version of that, which is quite interesting because, you see, friendship is just one of the many, many relationships. In fact, I would argue by the time you draw a diagram, if something has a diagram, it's telling you that it's not simple. Right? How many of you know relationships are complicated? Relationships are kind of messy at times, right? So you would see this diagram and go to different type of friendship. And I, I have used some of that myself. Like someone goes, is that your friend? I would say, well, he, I, I, you know, we work together. We are acquaintances. So absolutely, they are acquaintances, friends, and a good friend and so forth. And the interesting thing about a pyramid is that you can go up and you can go down. And the reason it goes up and down is because it is messy. It is complicated. It, you know, when you have live event you share with somebody, that you get closer, so you move up. But then when you quarrel and have disagreement, then you go down. 
right? So friendship can go up and down. But I think what we're about to talk about today is not just the top of that triangle, but the tip of that top of that triangle, okay? Um, some of the th words we can talk about, what I would call the quality of friendship, is really uh, trustworthy, right? Whether someone, you need to, if you're going to be friend with someone, that got to be someone that you can trust, okay? It's someone who is dependable, okay? Uh, if, I want if I want employee and coworker that are dependable, I definitely want my friends to be dependable, okay? I want to be able to count on you, right? Supportive is another word. You know, we don't, we don't always have to agree, but being supportive for someone is important, right? Um, praise, the, praise the Lord, okay? Uh, friends want each other to listen, not just all talk, right? There's a reason why we have twice as many ears as we have mouth, okay? Two ears, one mouth, so we can listen more and talk less. Um, if you ask my wife, I don't do a very good job of that, uh, you know, but yet she, she, she stick with me, so praise the Lord. <laughs> So, uh, being a friend also means you are emotionally available. The reason we talk, we need to vent to one another is because not only we want someone to listen, we want them to understand. Right? Uh, my wife taught me this a long time ago. Uh, when it comes to feelings, they are neither right or wrong. They just are. Right? Feel, when we talk about it, we talk about feelings. It is true men have a lot less of those. Um, yeah, it's just how, how we're made, but you know, we, we are capable of having empathy and sympathy and all that, okay, for a very short time. Um, we're typical, meaning it go both way. I, I, I think we might all have an experience with one or another where we are the one being proactive in a relationship. I, uh, Joy and I have some really interesting experience in our life. Um, we got married fairly young, um, in our 20, mid-20s. And, um, and God took you to different stages. Uh, my best man was my best friend throughout junior high and high school. I, uh, her, uh, her maid of honor was her best friend, same thing, throughout, they grew up together in the same high. But today, as we're here, 20 something years later, um, almost 30 years, I can tell you that our, uh, we don't have, we are still friends with our best man and maid of honor, but that type of relationship evolved. We are. We are, uh, you know, if we go back to that, that, that triangle, I would tell you we are acquaintance, we are friends, but we, they are not on the top of that. Different people have taken that place on the top of that pyramid, okay? But that's just how, you know, how God works out. Um, people can walk with you, but your partner changes as you go through that journey of life, right? That's just what it is. Um, and when we're here at church, we want friends that are prayerful. You know, one of my, one of my wife's best friends, they, they talk on the phone maybe only once a week because she, uh, she, her best friend lived in the Bay Area in California. Uh, so they talk, they don't get to see each other, but when they talk, they pray. They talk about what need to be prayed for and what not, you know, so they pray for one another. And the last but not least on that, accountability, right? Uh, we need to hold our friends accountable, right? Are they, uh, are they into, the, you know, you can ask them, hey, have you been into the word of God this week? You know, have you, have you been dealing with your finances honestly? I mean, these are some accountability questions that you, some people actually have what they call accountability partner. They have those conversations, all right? Uh, we want our friends to be, uh, hold us accountable and vice versa, all right? That's a real friend, someone who can do that, okay? Um, now, the next slide you see, I think you will see some example of, of what best friends are. It might work more in the, in the, uh, Chinese context, because I was born and raised here until I was 12 years old, so you see some of the picture, but um, this is an old movie in the 80s. If, you, if you're born here, you'll understand. Uh, the next slide, and it's a, it's a long tradition of comic book in, in, in Hong Kong. These are three best friends. Uh, and then next one, once again, it just, child, I'm a child of the 80s, so it just, a um, picture of different friendship, okay? Um, one thing I think, you know, we have a Chinese saying, that, that, and, and I think it's true. When you are best friend and know you each other, I can only tell you that because my wife and I, we have that, is that sometimes we don't have to speak word. We understand. Right? We have, you, you hope to have that in a marriage. Sometimes with your best friend, you also hope to have that in your friendship. Um, so sometimes talking is just unnecessary when you are at that level of friendship and relationship. Now, the next thing I'm going to touch on is, uh, how many of you know C.S. Lewis? Who's C.S. Lewis? Okay, a few of us. C.S. Lewis is an author in the late 1800s, early 1900s, 
And he wrote a book called The Four Loves. And it touched on four different kind of love. Okay? Uh, and I'm going to go through them little by little, and then we can finish up. Um, and then go through the Word of God. The first one is uh, uh, storgi, or stork. It means affection. But most of all, it's talk about familial type of relationship. I, like your family, your, your brother, sister, your parents, your, ch your child, your children, and whatnot. That's the type of relationship, a uh, love. The second kind is uh, filial, which, which is more of what we are talking about today. It's type of bond between friends, okay? Um, and then the next one is eros, which is the physical attraction and love, the kind of love that you have among a married couple, okay? And the last but not least, we all heard this agape, which is the self-sacrificing love, which is the kind of love that God has for each and every one of us, okay? Now, we're going to, if we're going to talk about Jonathan and David, the question is, what kind of love do they have for each other? If someone asked me that, I would, I would argue, they have Storky because they have, they, they, they're so close, right? They're almost like family. In fact, I would say they are probably closer than some brother and sister would be. Right? They absolutely are filial. They have that type of bond between the two of them. Um, and then agape, because I know that they would, you know, because in fact, in the story, they talk about Jonathan taking uh, off his clothes and his armors and giving it to David. So I can say for certainty that agape is part of the love that Jonathan and David have for one another. Now, I think let's go through some of the verses, Okay. I think it's in 1 Samuel, if I remember correctly. Voila. Okay, so here's, as soon as David had finished speaking to Saul, the soul of Jonathan went keen to the, neat to the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. And Saul took him that day and would not let him return to his father's house. Okay? And then Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as his own soul, and Jonathan stripped himself of the rope that was on him and gave it to David and his armor and even his sword and his bow and his belt. Right? I just touched on that how um, they love each other. Right? They make a commitment to each other. Now, I want to touch on the word covenant because I know a lot of time we talk about we make promises to each other. That's what we do. We human, we make, we make promises to one another. But when it's a covenant, it is beyond just that two person. When you make a covenant, you are you are telling God, okay, this is what I'm going to do for this person, or this is what I'm going to do. So a covenant, a marriage is a covenant. That's why you have that, that, that uh, wedding ring on your finger, because it's not just a promise when we say to death do us apart. It is also a promise to God that you will honor and uphold those, the vow that you made on your wedding day. So in this case, Jonathan and David made a covenant, not just with one another, but also with God as their witness that this is how they will treat and take care of each other, Okay. And we can go, the question I want to ask today is, is it easy or difficult to be a friend? What about, is it easy or difficult to find a friend? All right? No, no, you, 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 you know, uh, <laughs> it's ironic because, because in America we have a saying, we go, there's no such thing as a free lunch. Sometimes when people are friends with us, we think, is that something that they, what is it that they want from us? I don't know, maybe it's, I always try to be positive. Maybe they just want me to listen. That's, well, that's usually the way I start. I will listen. And then you can kind of figure out people's motive as you go there. Sometimes they just need a friend. All right? Um, with that said, we can move forward with the David and, and Jonathan story. And if you know the Bible, you know what happened was, um, even though, King Saul tried to keep his authority and his power and his position. He was not successful. In fact, at the end, David uh, became the king of Israel. And at that same time, both King Saul and Jonathan died uh, in a battle. Okay? And we move forward, and I think it's the next part uh, where, I think it was in 2 Samuel this time, we talk about, uh, here you go, he said, this is part of what, what Jonathan and David's love is about, their relationship. It's that, I am distressed for you, my brother Jonathan. Very pleasant to have you, have you been to me. And your love to me was extraordinary. Do me a favor, look at your neighbor and say extraordinary. Extraordinary, okay. Surpassing the love of woman. 
Đấy. And then David said, "Is it?" And this is this verse come after David became a king. And one day, as he was just going through day, and he started saying, "Is there still anyone left in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? Because they make the vow to take care of each other and take care of each other's family." Right? And now King、uh, David is in power, and he said, "Is there anyone else、uh, that still belong in the house of Saul?" And then the next verse, you see. They told him that they find out David find out that he still、uh, Jonathan still have a son. Then Jonathan、uh, go in peace. Nope. The next one. Maybe I didn't put it up. I don't remember. So anyway, okay. So what David find is David find that、uh, Jonathan still have a son,、uh, Mephibosheth. He was a cripple. Okay, and he was by himself. So what David did was David sent someone, someone to bring、uh, Mephibosheth to the palace to Israel. And from that point on, he told Jonathan's son to eat with him every single day in the palace. Right. The interesting thing about this at that time when you are uh, uh, think about it from David's perspective, many kings who would come to power would want to get rid of every single heir of the previous king. Because they will always want revenge. They want them to. They might want to come back to power, right? But instead of doing that, David said, "Go find me Jonathan's son, and I want him to be with me, because I have made a promise to his father that I would take care of him." So, despite being a cripple, John,、uh, David have him have meal with him, and a, 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 along with that, David is showing everyone in Israel the type of king that he is, as that he he kept his promise to his best friend. And that Mephibosheth was not a threat. In fact, Mephibosheth also had a child himself named Micah, and David did not do harm to either one of them. David kept them with them with him in the palace all the day of their life. He kept his promise to his best friend. He honored those promise. The interesting thing about the word honor is that it is both a noun and is a verb. And David honored his best friend. Praise the Lord. And as I was reading this, I couldn't help but think, why? What was going on in David's mind? Right? I, I don't know about you. Part of the difficult thing being a friend is that you have to go with somebody, walk with someone, like we say in Pakiki Salmon, that journey to the ups and downs. And I can be frank and say that it is easy, is easier to walk with someone when they're down, because you can say positive things, you can encourage them, and you're going to be fine. God is going to take care of you. Be faithful. Right. The difficult part in a friendship really is, how do you celebrate with somebody? Because many times when your friend is doing well, you yourself are no longer in that place. You are at your low point, right? That's how life is up and down, up and down. How do we celebrate、uh, someone with somebody when we ourselves are not doing well all of a sudden? Celebrating with someone is way harder than being there for them when they're at their low point. And I think, looking back. David, and now who is a king, is at his high point, but he was not able to share his victory with his best friend because his best friend had already passed away in the battle. I think it was at that moment they had asked, "Is there anyone else left in the house of Saul that I can show kindness to?" As I shared, it was you know, Joy and I have a different journey since we got married, and God had been gracious because, but at the at when we got married twenty something years ago, we were not a Christ follower. We didn't know we know of Jesus, but we didn't know Jesus. But through that, you know, all the years he'd been faithful. We were here in Hong Kong, then we were in mainland China, and now we're in the Philippines. God, we have that song. I remember it was one of the first song that that you know we sing at a home church was, "I'm a friend of God." Right? God is our friend. And how do you know, my prayer is that we can be good friend to our friends. We can not only be there when things are low, when things are bad, but also celebrate with them. How do we do that? Well. I can tell you that Jonathan and David did it with with the help of the Lord. 
And ironically, today is Pentecost Sunday. It's the day that the Holy Spirit came to us, right, and dwelling in us. And the last photo you will see is, um, you know, celebrating people. And the last uh, picture you will see is it's like a bunch of controllers. The more I walk with the Lord, the longer I walk with the Lord, the more I realize I, I don't have a lot of control. It's very little. The, the, the older I get, whether it's my children, my, my, my in-laws, it, but the, the things that I can control, I think that's what the Lord has asked us to do, is just take care of those things that you can reach with your hand, that, that, that are in your control. One of the things we can control is how, what kind of friends we're going to be. Right? We don't get to choose what happened to us. We get to choose how do we act to the things that happened to us. And you're going to do just fine when you allow the Holy Spirit to partner with you, to be a friend, to be someone, to be there for someone, to celebrate with somebody through the ups and downs. I think that is the, essential, the, the essence of Pakiki Sama. Right. Praise the Lord. Mm-hmm.